Do you think the Easter Bunny came last night? Bunny hid some eggs in the family room for you to find. Yeah, he left this for you to collect the eggs. Yeah. Look at these. No, it's yours, but thank you. No, I'm not dead. Think, censoring They smelled it. But she only smelled it. Are you holding on to the railing? Okay. He had 11 Easter eggs, it looks like. Uh -huh. Oh, there's one. Well, 
Sveg I made. Oh my goodness, you're really good. This Easter Bunny can't trick you. Wow. Oh, wow, holy I think that's God, seven. Wow. Oh! That's okay. That's that's why we hard boiled them. That's okay. Mr. Bunny doesn't mind. Oh. Wow. You're biting them all. Silly and put some in there. Uh -huh. Oh, he did. Is there any in the trampoline? Is there? I don't know. Hmm. Brother's chair. Do you think he put some in your brother's chair? In his little blue bouncy chair over here? Okay. Over there, do you think he was silly and put, uh, put an egg over there? Huh? Yeah. Oh, he was. Silly rabbit. Can I get a smile? This way? Okay. <laughs> I see it. Look over here somewhere. Okay. You're touching it. Yeah. That's the egg. <laughs> you Good found job. all you 11 found eggs. Really? Found all eleven eggs. Oh, here you are, face to face in this trashy bar. Another glass, and I am going places. Makes me laugh about the irony of everything. I like the way you think, and I don't really care about. On the dance floor, I don't really mind all the smokers in the bathroom. I don't care at all, baby. You got my attention, so you were saying, Oh no, I don't see the logic of things. It's quite a lonely world that we're living in. Oh, baby, you are something special, I'm sure. Everything makes total sense when you're next to me.
hundred times Another drink and I'll go anywhere The way you smile Like a flash in the universe You are illuminating I don't really care about the people in the bar line I don't really mind all the who goes doing stage dives I don't care at all, baby, you got my attention So you would say yeah I don't see the logic of things It's quite a lonely world that we live Okay, hope Oh, I gotta go pee for <sighs> Do Women's Health Clinic. Is that OB Triage? Second floor? Women's Health Clinic? I do not know. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I have sunglasses. Is that the question? Oh, I do. Okay. Alrighty, kind of sucks that I have to go to this appointment. Our plans changed a little bit. Richard was going to bring Elizabeth to our in-laws, or his parents, I guess, um, and do like an outdoor Easter egg hunt and just like use her Easter goodies there as well. But his mom doesn't finish work until 12, so they're gonna have lunch and then I think head over there for 12. I mean, really, she doesn't nap anymore and we don't want her napping anymore because she won't go to bed till like 10 10 30 so um if she does nap then at least she'll crash and it'll go be well but yeah so that's what we're doing we are headed whoop, to my pre-op appointment i can't believe he is going to be here in less than three days so that's where we're headed. I wanted to leave a little bit early just so I had like time to park and find the place. I think I'll be fine, but you know, just to be safe. Um, does anybody else feel bad? Like I have to lie to Elizabeth. The only thing that seems to not upset her is if I say if I'm going to work. Then it's like she understands and she's like, oh, okay, mom has to go to work. But if I say I'm going anywhere, basically, um, wait, which way should I go? Yeah, this way. Thinking, wait, which way is the best way to the hospital? Um, so anywho, um, what was I saying? Yeah, if I say work, she's fine. But if I say anything like, basically anything else, if it's doctor, dentist, massage therapist, I don't know, like, it freaks her out. I don't understand why. Um, and she doesn't like that. She gets upset and tells me that I can't go. If I say anywhere else, then she wants to go with me. So, um, yeah, I just say I'm going to work for a little bit, and it seems to not upset her, so that's what I do. I'm not 100% sure yet what we're doing, what we're going to tell her when we go for my C-section. Um, I know she's going to have fun at my parents' house. I just don't know how she's going to react. I was thinking tomorrow I'm going to try and like prep her closer to the date and just kind of explain to her what's going to happen. Um, hopefully in terms where I don't upset her. Um, yeah. That's the goal. It's kind of cool out. I probably should have a coat, but I was like, I'm just going from the hospital to, um, like, the car to the hospital. So, I was like, it's fine. I threw on my Birkenstocks because I was cutting it close to for time. Um, the Easter Bunny showed up. He showed up last year. Um, I don't know. Th this one house on my street, they must have the Easter Bunny's phone number or something. Because two years in a row, he's gone to their house, and they live, like, diagonal to us or whatever. Like, they live pretty close. So, um, last year, we just kind of stayed in our yard and um, uh, waved to the Easter Bunny. But this year, she wanted to go see it. I think, too, 
we would have stayed in our yard, but then all the neighborhood kids were like running and going to see it, so we were like, okay, well, we might as well go too. Um, we just stayed off their property and like respected, like, you know. So, anywho, that happened. So, I just, I already had my Birkenstocks on, so I just like left. I can, I don't know if I can still fit into my running shoes. I'm thinking on Wednesday that's what I want to wear, but we'll see. Um, I don't feel the greatest. I think it's just pregnancy stuff, obviously, but yeah. And then last night, um, you guys were all like, okay, let's explain the last clip. So last night I had minor back pain. I don't know how I got, well, I shouldn't say I don't know. I was fine, and then if you saw in the clip of me putting my pregnancy clothes away and taking out my postpartum clothes oh my gosh I'm out of breath um then you would have saw that um that's what well you maybe not saw but I that's when my back started to hurt it was like minor oh my gosh nothing I wasn't used to I could handle and then later on it just went like from here to here and it wasn't like it was just really uncomfortable um so I just looked up different ways to like relieve the back pain that's why you saw me on the chair um I didn't know if it was like I didn't know if it was back labor or not it's so hard to say because with Elizabeth um I got induced so and I had like back pain but I wasn't I was like after reading it and I know you shouldn't google stuff but I was like I'm pretty sure I'm fine like I'm like I feel like if this was back labor or any sort of labor it would stop and go not just be one full thing so um what should we call it and I knew I was having my pre-op appointment today too at the hospital so I was like let's just like you know wait out of course this is when Richard's putting Elizabeth to bed. So the entire time he's putting her to bed, he's just like, how, are you thinking, like, how is she doing? Is she getting worse? Do we need to leave? Because I said to him, like, let me play it out. Elizabeth should be asleep by 8. I should have some sort of idea what the heck's going on by then. And if we need to, that way, that way nobody else has to put her to bed. And it's just not this horrid transaction because basically I can't go into labor or, like, a I'm having a, a C-section regardless, right? He's measuring big. So, if I'm feeling contractions and I think labor is starting, I gotta get to the hospital. I know the rule is like four, and uh, you have to be four centimeters, you're out the door kind of thing, four, you're out the door, at least in my hospital. That's kind of how they do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm having a C-section regardless. So... Most people would wait until their contractions are worse, but if I'm feeling like I'm having contractions and I think I'm in labor, I still have to go to the hospital just to be safe and stuff. So, and I didn't want to text my mom because I didn't want to like stress her out or call her or whatever. So I just waited out and then my back felt better. Um, like I didn't time anything. Um, like I feel like I had a few contractions if that's what they were, I feel like it was. Felt like my uterus was contracting. Um, but it only happened like a couple times. And then I thought I felt it again this morning. But I was like, you know what? I'm getting an NST today. Blood work. Not that blood work will tell me if I'm in labor or not, but um, you know, all this stuff. So I was like, I fly. Oh. <laughs> section I thought this might be good for you so yeah I went in and they gave me um, a sheet 
shield I had to wear over top of my like side of my mask and then I had my shield um, Richard was not allowed to come which I knew that they didn't tell me uh, but just through a friend so for example there was somebody there who had an appointment and they brought their significant other and I mean like the lady didn't the nurse didn't tear, turn him away but she was just, you know let him know that planned appointments <clears throat> no like visitors or whatever but anywho I technically was not told I just knew from somebody else so yeah went to OB triage um they did my blood work right away because there was already somebody there like my appointment wasn't until 11 but I think I was in <coughs> the waiting room at like 10 2 <clears throat> so yeah I went because there was somebody there already doing somebody else's blood work she did my blood work and then um uh what else and then I had a nurse bring me paperwork that I had to fill out so basically it was just like my history my medical history of like certain things fill that out and then I had the surgeon come talk to me and just basically kind of um not go over everything the nurse went over everything with me oh my goodness you guys are all flipped there so um basically he asked me the exact same questions I already did on my form but he had to write it down he wanted to know the last time I had a c-section as well because I I know that's important too um but it's been three years almost three years so um that's lots of good time um yeah I'm trying to think if there's anything else like I think that was it oh he asked me for my weight my height and then after that the nurse came oh while he was there the nurse um <clears throat> oh and they asked me a couple of, a couple of questions the nurse got my temperature and my blood pressure um and that way the um doctor could put it on the paperwork um what else oh and then oh and he checked my heart rate as well so he did that and then the doctor left and then the nurse hooked me up to um the machines so if you have never had an nst a non-stress test basically they want to see baby's heart rate go up three times so for me baby was sleeping so she was like she got me some ice water for me to drink so that I could that usually they said like perks perks them up and gets them moving so once that happened oh yeah baby was moving up a storm I thought really like ice water oh they weren't kidding <laughs> and like I already had a pee to begin with so like there was a couple times where like I could just like feel him pressing pressing on my bladder oh um so yeah she did that and then basically once his heart rate went up three times I was good to go and I could go home um and while that was going on she just kind of yeah told me no jewelry I can't eat or drink after seven so she's like um if you want like uh get up a little bit earlier so I don't know like this might be risky but I'm thinking I might get a big breakfast because that usually fills me up I don't care about throwing up that doesn't bother me I don't, I would rather throw up and feel full all day than have a headache and feel nauseous and feel weak and not throw up or like throw up nothing basically. And I'm sorry if, um, like that, I'll put a thing before this editing Ashley trigger warning. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I might do that. Okay, technically. I could eat until 7 um, because I thought about going to bed late but I don't want I don't also want to be exhausted um, because I have Elizabeth and I want to try and hang out with her you know and just be the best version of myself um, Wednesday morning for her um, so we'll see but I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do um, and like go order breakfast at six o'clock in the morning like and even go get it the other thing too is like Richard's gonna be working here let me there 
Richard's going to be working until up until a date. So, um, unless he has to go off sooner, like it just depends when I go. But at the latest, he's working. Um, so, we're both going to be like, I, oh my god, I don't want both of us to be exhausted. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but I just, I felt really good afterwards. Like, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, basically we just go in a way that, like, the, basically the show begins. They set you all up and get everything going. And, um, I don't know. I, it felt really good. Like, I felt, I felt like I kind of had a better grasp of what was going on. Because an emergency C-section and a planned C-section, they're totally different when it comes to, like, prepping. Um, but yeah, so basically they'll go, he, Richard's allowed to come up with me, um, because it's not a planned, I guess in a way it is a planned appointment, but he's allowed to come up with me, and, um, the only time he can't go into the room is when they're putting my spinal tap in, so, uh, which makes sense, he wasn't allowed in the room either for the epidural. Um, I know some hospitals and, like, I'm sure countries and stuff are different, but, I <sighs> okay. Something he's he's not allowed to do. So, and then they won't do a COVID test before, but they do it after. But that might change. They said, which I get. I just want everybody to feel comfortable. So I I totally understand if they would want me to get a COVID test before. Um, but yeah. So I think that's it. Alright. So Richard is getting Elizabeth ready for bed. We had a little bit of a a little bit of a breakdown. Um, just after dinner, I think it was just, it was overstimulating for her today. She has not a soother in like four days and, um, no nap. Uh, so I think it was just like, she was done. <laughs> um, I know my husband wanted to just let Elizabeth have her soother. He, like, his heart broke because she was like upset, but... If there's anything I know, you, if I give her that soother, it's going to be even harder to take away the next time. So, um, we pulled through. I found something she wanted to do that cheered her up. And, yeah, now she's getting ready for bed. And that was our Easter. I didn't really film anything else after because um, it was just kind of not overwhelming but stressful. Um just trying to make sure she was happy um she's also been having accidents and that's frustrating too um i don't know if it's because baby's coming that's a possibility uh but it was just like kind of a stressful evening my back was giving me issues again so um yeah i'm sitting down because it's like the one thing i can do <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bother my back, so I'm going to try to edit some videos. I've been slowly working on this mess back here. Um, I texted my sister. I'm going to see if she can come over and help tomorrow because there's still stuff I want to get done. And it's just going to feel so good to get it all done before baby comes. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I've got stuff that needs to go in the crawl space. Honestly, I feel like that's a majority of it. Like, it has to go in the crawl space, and then there's a few things that have to go in the garage. And that's it. So, I'm trying to rest my back for a little bit, and then I'll work on it again a little bit more. Um, and hopefully get it done. So, yeah. I'm going to call it a night. Um, hopefully I can vlog for you guys tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, good night, everyone.